going on, comic fam and nerds? I am with Sean Kanan. Uh, welcome to my show. I'm so excited to just have you on and talk about your books. Thanks, brother. I appreciate it. Yeah. So, I mean, people know you, you know, from Karate Kid 3. They probably know you from maybe Bold and Beautiful uh, or your Emmy, you know, winning show, Studio City. But I want, we, we talk about all that. You talk about that stuff all the time. I want to talk about your two books, Way of the Cobra and Welcome yeah. to the Kumite. Like, they're really good books, and I think people need to check them out for sure. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. I, you know, I agree, too. Um, <laughs> I, I wish somebody gave me those books when I was uh, uh, younger. I probably would have figured some things out a lot quicker in life. Right? Well, <laughs> it, what that's so great about these books is they, they seem to be, like, life lessons, you know, inspirational from that aspect. And, you know, one of the things I wanted to hop into right away on In Way of the Cobra, which is your first book in this, it seems like a series that you've kind of created yes. here. Um, you talk about finding your why. And yeah. I think finding your why was important for you because it kind of helped shape into coming into writing novels and writing books like this. Yeah, absolutely. You know, what is your why? Your why is that thing that when you uh, you get knocked down, it picks you up. It's, uh, you know, when you've uh, had your butt kicked and feel like quitting, your why is going to tell you why you're doing what you're doing. Um, you know, uh, for me, I always thought that I got into being an actor because I wanted to have a voice and I wanted to express myself. And I, I, I do love to entertain people. And that's all true and is still true. But really, I got into acting because I wanted to inspire people. Mm. And, and as I went further along in my career, I realized that, you know, acting was only one conduit to do that. Um, you know, my, my motivational speaking and my, my writing is hopefully another uh, way to do that. So for me, um, my why is to inspire other people to be their best. Yeah. That and, you know, my commitment to my wife. And, you know, I, I always tell people to get a tangible representation of their why and carry it with them. And for me, you know, I just have to look down at my left hand and I've got my wedding ring. But your why will get you through when the going gets tough and the going always gets tough. There's a, a, a very, very famous book written um, uh, by... Uh, uh, Victor Frankel, who had the horrendous experience of uh, being in a, a Nazi death camp. Mm. And um, he was able to get through it because he attached the why that he had to stay alive so that he could bear witness to what happened and tell other people. And that got him through. And if you have a strong enough why, you can get through any how or what. Right. Well, and I, I, what I loved about it was it was so, it was so challenging to my belief of, you know, like, you know, people know you from acting, right? Like that's, you, huh? and like you said, you got into acting because you wanted to inspire people. But if you didn't find your real why of, you know, wanting to inspire people, it might not have yeah. opened up the venue to write these books and have that inspiration. So I think it's really important how you talk about that, finding your why. Yeah. You know, it's, it's funny. I, I've always kind of been a seeker, you know, I've always been interested in, personal excellence and and you know bettering myself as much as i can and um you know i i turned 50 and i went through kind of a weird metamorphosis i uh, i had received a, a star on the palm springs walk of fame and you know i'd had some i had some pretty good success um but and i had some epic failures too and after, you know, the parties finished and, and, and sort of all of the hullabaloo of getting the star and everything kind of looked in the mirror and I was like, what's next, dude? Like, what, what's the next chapter here? And there was a part of me that kind of felt like a fraud. I mean, you know, from the outside in, you know, I looked to have all the trappings of a very successful life. Um, but in reality, I was kind of on a slow but definitive slide towards mediocrity and i realized that if i didn't do something very quickly um i i was going to risk living a life that was mediocre and uh you know i decided to make some very big changes very quickly and um it had a profound effect on my life and that was largely the impetus for writing way of the cobra and i always tell people you know before you think that i'm uh living on top of some mountaintop in Kathmandu, you know levitating three feet off the ground i've made every mistake in my books right. a dozen times over 
You know, I, I'm one of those people that, you know, unfortunately has to learn the hard way sometimes. Uh, I've gotten better at that. And I was like, you know what, if I, if I can share some of my hard earned um, wisdom through experience, uh, I'd like to do that because, um, you know, I, people always say, oh, I like to learn through experience. I, I'd rather learn through someone else's experience if it's something that is going to save me from a pitfall or a trap. I mean, of course, you want to learn something through experience if it's right. if it's something that you need to learn for yourself. But if it's simply just avoiding something that you don't want to do, I don't feel that you always have to go through the pain of experiencing it to learn what not to do. And that's what I wanted to, to accomplish here was to kind of act like a kind of act like a, a Sherpa or a sensei is what yeah. I say. And, you know, kind of um, help people up the mountain, so to speak, uh, because people have helped me before. And, um, you know, by making some of the changes that I made, I really was able to uh, affect some paradigm shifts in my life. Just, just some absolutely 180 degree tectonic um, changes in, in my behavior, uh, the actions I was taking, and it resulted in amazing results. Yeah. Well, and it almost feels like you're giving, like, you're giving people the tools, like, cause you're going to go, like, you're going to go through stuff in life. Like it's going to happen. It's going to punch you in the face. And so you're, if you can get some of these things that you learn in way of the Cobra and welcome to the Kumite, like, and kind of have that in your repertoire that when you're yeah. going through it, it makes it not as challenging you're, you're, or difficult. You're, you're better equipped. You know, uh, there, there's so much going on in these books and, and it's, it's a little difficult to encapsulate it really quickly. Um, you know, but you just mentioned something about, you know, everyone's going to go through stuff. And I talk about the difference in Welcome to the Kumite between being happy and being meaningfully happy. Mm -hmm. And what's the difference? Well, happy is kind of this pop culture term that we use that generally is a result of some external force. Uh, something happens. We feel temporarily good about it. It dissipates. And now you're looking for the next thing to make you quote unquote happy. Meaningful happiness comes from within. Yeah. That comes from being comfortable in your own skin, knowing who you are, and you can have a really shitty day and still be a happy person, be a meaningfully happy person. And that's what it's about. It's about getting the tools so that when, you know, life throws you a curveball, which it always will, yeah. you know, you don't get completely spun out. Yeah. Um, that's, that's one of the things. And, um, you know, Welcome to the Kumite is a, a continuation of Way of the Cobra. It's set up in the same structure that I'm the sensei. Uh, you're in, you know, the dojo of Cobra life. Cobra being an acronym formed from the words character, optimization, balance, respect, and abundance. And uh, in many ways, it's a it's a more personal book. Mm -hmm. um, I, I definitely share a lot of, you know, what was my struggle that led me to ultimately save myself. Uh, and I share that in the book. And, um, you know, some of what I talk about is philosophy, because philosophy teaches us to ask the bigger questions of the world around us, others and ourself. But philosophy without strategy is impotent. It's just, you know, it lives in your mind. So you have to have, you know, day to day practical strategy to put stuff in effect. But strategy without philosophy is undisciplined and unwieldy. So you need the two to work in tandem together. So true. It's such a good, like gang, if you're just listening to this interview and you're like, man, this is good stuff. Like this is what the book is all about. Like it's <laughs> right, so much. Right, good. Right. So when you started out with way of the Cobra, did you have the idea that you were going to do another book in this series? Or like when you were getting in the grind of writing the book, you're like, there's way too much to put into this. I got to unpack more later. I think a lot of it was that it was so well received. Okay. I mean, it really has created a sense of community and a very loyal following. And then, you know, I started, I, I, my, my coaching business really started to increase. And, you know, I learned so much from my, my coaching students mm -hmm. um, and, it, and it helped me refine certain things that were beliefs that I had for myself. But once I started seeing how they were affecting my coaching students, I was like, I got to put this in the new book. You know, one of the things I'll share with you that I've really come to believe, and it, it, it's something that can benefit you no matter what you're doing in life, stay out of the results. What I'm all about is creating a bulletproof process for whatever you do, create a process. Look at, look at when we drive our car, what's the goal? Well, the goal is to get wherever you're going and get there safely. 
Those are the goals, right? Yep. In order to do that, what do you do? You have a bunch of habits that create a process. You unlock the door, you sit in the car, you check your mirrors, you turn the ignition on, you put your seatbelt on, you check again, you throw it in reverse and you obey the, uh, the traffic signs, right? Mm -hmm. and, and that system, that process is what gets you the results. You don't really think about the results of, God, I hope I get there, I hope I get there. You just do the next right thing because right. you've built this system in place. So what I talk about is whatever you're doing, whether it's, it's communicating with your partner, whether it's how you behave at work, whether it's trying to achieve fitness goals, create a bulletproof process and trust that the results will come. Part of creating the process is that, you know, you're constantly doing sort of a self-diagnostic and finding out what's working and what's not working and you're recalibrating and tweaking, always making it a better process. But if you, if you, if you build a great process and you um, utilize it effectively and consistently, the results will come. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's so cool to see, like, like you talk about systems a lot in this book and you know how it is, it almost just becomes natural breathing. Like you don't think about breathing, yeah. like you have yourself, it's in order to set it up, set you up for success. Right. And, right. and you, one of the things you talk about in welcome to the Kumite is, um, this process of a hero's journey. Um, yeah. You go in this whole chapter and like, what I loved was when I was reading it, like you are a movie buff yourself. Like you, you seem yeah. like that you, you love movies as a kid. And, and so like, you kind of break down this, this hero's journey about how they go through and like, how was, how was pop culture movies like that for you, you know, inspirational as a kid to help you shape this kind of figuring out the hero's journey. So, you know, as a kid, I, I was one of like five Jewish kids in a pretty, pretty hard scrambled uh western pennsylvania steel town and i was chubby and awkward and had glasses and insecure and you know i i was very quickly uh the target of of bullying mm -hmm. and i used to go to the movie theater that was like my oasis you know i could hide out in the dark and i saw my first uh my first mentors there you know whether it was the outlaw josie whale whales who, who taught me you know about quiet cool or rocky balboa who you know, showed me that the underdog, no matter what the odds were, could come out on top or Obi-Wan Kenobi, uh, who taught, you know, sort of the Eastern Eastern philosophy of, of um, you know, like Zen Buddhist philosophies and mindfulness and that sort of stuff. And it had a, another effect, too, which was that it planted the seeds for me to want to become an actor because I, I saw the incredible communicative power that film had and how it just when it's good, when it's really good, it's mesmerizing. You know, and I was just, I was hook, line and sinker. And, you know, so years later, I started taking martial arts and I mean, you know, I wasn't really getting bullied anymore. Um, but that was kind of the impetus for me to, uh, um, you know, spark the interest to become an actor, yeah. to recognize the, you know, the formidable, transformative power that film has um, and uh, how it could be so inspiring. And I think that really laid the groundwork, even if it was unbeknownst to me at the time, that, that I wanted to do something where I could move people. Mm. Yeah. Well, it, it's what's interesting is, too, is, you know, we all gravitate towards the hero's journey, right? Like we all gravitate towards those. And, you know, because that's the ones that we want to we want to emulate that. Right. Like we want to emulate that yeah. lifestyle. You know, everybody, look, you know, one of the things I say in the book is the hero's journey, for those people that don't know, comes from Joseph Campbell's book, um, Hero with a Thousand Faces. And he mm -hmm. talks about this thing called the monomyth. And the monomyth is this great lit literary device that is found in every piece of major literature and film. And it's this journey that the hero goes on. And it's effectively a journey from ignorance to enlightenment. Okay. And, and, it, and it happens through a metaphoric death okay who who the character is when we first meet them to who they are in the end requires them to confront their greatest opponent which always comes in the form one way or another um of their fatal flaw and so so i chose this for two reasons first the tagline for welcome to the kumite is uh defeat your greatest opponent well of course your greatest opponent is you and how do you do that? You do that by every single day, allowing who you were yesterday to die so you can be reborn the next day as, you know, 2.0 
2.1 to, you know what I mean? You yeah. just are continually You're just leveling up, <laughs> leveling up. And, you know, you don't always level up in a straight vertical trajectory. You know, we, we make mistakes, but, but if you're constantly trying to level up in every area of your life, you know, uh, even incrementally, then you're making progress. That's the first thing. The second thing is that I say in the book, a lot of people think, who am I to be a hero? Who are you not to be? Right. You know, I, I, your life is yours to design. And you think of it as, as a great film. And you're the director, you're the casting director, you're the writer, and you're the producer all wrapped up in one. Why the hell wouldn't you cast yourself as the hero? I mean, all things being equal and having played a few roles myself, pretty good playing the hero. The hero <laughs> gets the girl and the hero usually lives to fight another day, okay? Yep. And I talk about, you know, people say, well, who am I to be a hero? You know, you can be a hero in your own life just by um, being your authentic self, doing the next right thing, helping someone else. You know, it doesn't have to be this grand gesture, but life has a way of when you least expect it, tapping you on the shoulder and asking you to become a hero. And you, you have to know whether you're going to be ready. And I, I use the analogy of, uh, a guy that was a comedian. He used to uh, uh, satire being a president. And then he eventually became the elected president of his country. And then when his country was invaded by what was supposedly one of the strongest militaries on earth, uh, he rose to become a national and then an international hero and inspiration. And of course, I'm talking about Vladimir Zelensky. Okay. I, I guarantee you when he was, you know, doing stand-up comedy he wasn't thinking of going head-to-head -head with you know uh, right. vladimir putin um but you just don't know and so you need to prepare yourself to be the hero and how do you do that well you do that by continually working on yourself you know and 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 emerging as a stronger smarter kinder more compassionate more giving, loving human being every single day. And do we fall short sometimes? Of course, we're human. But it's it's in the quest to do it that we find our grace. Yeah. Such good stuff. I will say, though, reading that section about the movies and stuff, it, there was a, I have a slight bone to pick with you. I mean, you're okay. from Western Pennsylvania, and you talk about how you, have, you sometimes crave red vines. I mean, come on, you should be a Twizzler man. Oh, uh, no, I like red vines. Why was that? Is is red vines is, uh, I mean, is Twizzlers are ge geocentric to uh, Western I, Pennsylvania? I, I mean, I think they're made in Pennsylvania, so I feel like you have oh, to. Oh, are they? I, I thought so. I don't know. I, I, I always have liked red vines better. I think it's because I bite the end off each side and I turn it into a straw. You can't you know? do that with a Twizzler. It doesn't yeah, work as well. Yeah, you can't do that with that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, one of my favorite sections, though, in the book is towards the end of Welcome to the Kumite. You have this, and you have so many great stuff, and people should read the book for whatever, you know, all the reasons. Thank but you. I will say, like, from this chapter alone, when you talk about communication, like that in and of itself, I think, like, man, the world would be a better place if people read that chapter and could figure out how to have conversations with people that you disagree with. Like, that was. Yeah powerful stuff Thank like you. yeah you know one of the things and i i mean it's it's just sort of a, a thought that i had by watching people in the news and yeah. you know very few things in life are black and white first of all yeah. there are generally are nano shades of gray to almost everything there are some times in life when something's black and white i'll acknowledge that but for the most part and so uh, you know what i what i stumbled on is that very few things are monolithic. And, you know, you look at politics and, you know, there's this tribalism going on where people are being divided by, you know, race, gender, socioeconomics, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, you know, not everyone who's black thinks one way, not everyone who's a woman thinks one way, not everyone who's a conservative thinks one way, but they're being talked to as if, you know, they are monolithic. And when you do that, you're no longer communicating with the person. You're communicating with them as some kind of a representation that fits in a pigeonhole. And we have got to learn not only to talk to each other with civility, but to disagree with civility. And, you know, you can absolutely disagree with an idea without an ad hominem attack where you're trying to eviscerate the humanity and the essence of the person. Right. You know, this canceling bullshit. And all of this stuff 
you know, we, we need to talk to each other. And, and also, people have got to stop looking for reasons to be offended. God knows there's enough of them out there. And there are legitimate reasons to be offended. But we have spawned an entire generation of younger kids, largely by what they're learning in school, where they are being taught to be hypervigilant for anything that potentially can be misconstrued uh, and, uh, you know, as an offense that allows them to identify as a victim. Yeah. And, you know, uh, victimhood is a choice. You can be a victim of something in the moment, absolutely. But perpetuating that identity is absolutely a choice. You know, I'll tell you about uh, a, a woman who had the, she hit the unlucky trifecta of being born into abject poverty, being sexually assaulted multiple times. And she wanted very much to be a newscaster. And she was not what we would call uh, in Hollywood camera friendly. Okay. okay? Yep. And she would have had pretty much every reason to look up at the heavens and to cry, you know, the unlucky station that she had been born into. You know what she did instead? She said, you get a car and you get a car, and you get a car and started a multi-billion dollar media company. And her name rhymes with her name uh, rhymes with Oprah. You know, <laughs> I mean, look, you know, Stephen Hawking, right. who uh, has uh, uh, ALS, yeah. you know, uh, you know, he didn't let that stop him. Um, you know, he's one of the most brilliant astrophysicists uh, uh, alive. And, I, you know, I talk about examples of people. Look, not everybody is born on equal footing in this lifetime. That is a reality, okay? Um, but, you know, and, and there are people who have definitely had some tremendously horrendous, difficult, bad beats to contend with, whether it's, it's you know, birth defects or, you know, uh, horrendous, you know, your home lights, the dumpster fire, blah, 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 blah. But for every one of those people, there's also a story about somebody who fought against the odds and they fought hard enough and their why was hard enough that mm. they overcame it. And, and you know what they didn't do? They didn't say, I'm a victim. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, for me, I mean, listen, for a long time, you know, I, I was very good at, at the dojo of rationalization you know, rationalizing why things weren't happening this way or that way for me. And when I got honest and was like, you know what? My life is my fault. I've mm -hmm. done some things right. And I'll take credit for those. But the things that have gone wrong, it's not my dad's fault. who never said I'd be good enough. He didn't do that, by the way. It's not, you know, my overbearing yeah. mother's fault sometimes. But, you know, <laughs> it's not it's, it's not my boss who's a jerk. He's not. Right. But you know what I mean? It's, right. You know, by the time you're 30 years old, you know, that's it. Mommy and daddy are no longer the reason that you're not setting the world on fire. And to set the world on fire, you got to figure out what you're passionate about. And if you figure out what you're passionate about and you pursue it to the best of your ability, the world will come and warm themselves in the flames of your passion. And you will burn like a, you know, like a, like a, a pyre on top of a mountain telling everyone what is possible. Yeah. It's like I, you talk about in your books out how you you spend like 30 minutes a day in your routine of reading. And I believe that through and through because your book is literally just littered with phrases and quotes of inspirational stuff. Like and I'm like trying to write down every single one. I'm just like, I can't like I can't write down every single one. So I'm like I'm like mentally screenshotting i'm like is that... by the book and then it's there for you right I know, right is are those are you know are those just things like where do you get all your motivational quotes you know, from is that know, from I, reading so much or yeah you know I, I i i do read a lot um um you know i'll be honest i there's times that i'll have an idea and i'll search for a quote to support it okay and for that reason this has been a tremendous learning process for me too right. you know i mean i've learned so much from the conclusion of the first book to the conclusion of the second one. Um, and I say in the introduction that my readers, you're my, my students, but you're also my teachers. Um, and so the whole process for me has, has helped me. Um, yeah. You know, reading is the great equalizer. I mean, it doesn't matter what your socioeconomic position is. It doesn't even matter if you're incarcerated, everybody has the ability to travel to faraway places and learn the thoughts of brilliant men and women 
uh, by, by reading. And when I say reading, I mean, reading, um, you know, you listen to something on audible, even watching a, a, you know, a YouTube documentary or history or whatever, it's filling your mind with new information. It's, it's, it's challenging your mind to think in ways that may be antithetical and, and, and serve as a status quo disruption to what you believe is right. And, and, you know, I think that's another thing that we, we really have to be careful that, you know, so much of our society has become an echo chamber and, and people do not like to have their realities challenged. And when you challenge their, re, their reality and their point of view, you know, people are so quick to shut you down and they use words that don't really give people a chance to continue the discussion. And I think it's very dangerous, you know, everything from not allowing speakers on certain campuses. You know, what? if there's some guy, look, I'm Jewish. You want some Nazi to come and talk on the campus? I say, let him. Let him talk and scream, you know, to the high heavens and let the, um, you know, the sanitizing sunlight show who and what they are and let people make their own decisions. But when you start telling people, oh, no, we can't have so-and-so or we can't have so-and-so, they're dangerous. That's that's hate speak, man. That's kind of dangerous. And the, you know, the founders of our country were absolutely brilliant. And they recognized that our First Amendment was to was to function not when it's easy, but, but when what you hear, you would spend a lifetime fighting against, yet you would fight for their right to do it. That's the First Amendment. When you're able to do that, then you understand the First Amendment. But, you know, if you're just listening for somebody to echo your opinion, but as soon as something, you know, is, is antithetical to it you, and you want to shut it down, that to me is about the least American thing you can do. Mm. Mm. Man, Sean, this is... This... <laughs> This has been just so much good. Like, president. and I could just, I could just talk forever about this. But I want to, I want to respect your time and things. Yeah. So, if people are listening to this, um, watching this, or listening to it on the podcast, and they're, I mean, they they should be inspired to pick up this book. I mean, if you're not like, you don't have a pulse. But <laughs> where can people find this your books? And so, you know, so welcome to the Kumite is only available right now at wayofthecobra.com. Okay, uh, it'll probably be on Amazon in a couple months. Oh, it's also available at um, Barnes and Noble in Los Angeles, um, uh, but that's the only place that it's available. Uh, Way of the Cobra is available on Amazon and Kindle, and if you want to get an autographed copy of it, you can go to WayOfTheCobra.com. And then one of my my goals for 2023 is I'm going to be putting out the audio book for both Way of the Cobra and Welcome to the Kumite in 2023. I am hell bent on doing that um i i tried recording way of the cobra myself and i i did the best i could but it just there were too many audio problems and mm -hmm. i put so much time in and i was like all right i need to take a break from this and so i decided to write the second book i said i'd rather write the second book than, than start again and do the audio book but this year i'm doing the audio books see and and you notice he said this year i'm doing it and i'm not like i hope right you're like, i'm doing it you talk about that you talk about happening. your language and it's happening in the book yeah, you, got, you, know, you got to speak in the affirmative oh and i'm going to give a, when is this going to air by the way uh probably sometime uh probably next week if that works out for you yeah great i'm just going to give a gratuitous plug i will be uh at the atlantic city comedy club on january 7th doing my show the comedy dojo saturday at 8 30 uh you can get tickets at accomedy.com it's going to be a ton of fun and uh if you don't come your karate is a joke Yes, I was. I mean, how often do you get asked to say your comedy? <laughs> I get asked a lot. I'm just glad you said it. And I didn't have to ask you. <laughs> I, I, I like the new the new thing now is when little kids come up to me and they go, "Hey, Mike fucking Barnes," <laughs> and I'm like, "You really shouldn't say that." <laughs> like, oh man, thanks, Cobra guys. <laughs> right. <laughs> so good. Well, uh, Sean, where can then people follow along with you too? Like, um, I know yeah. you're active on social and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Follow me on uh, Instagram. It's Sean.Kanan. I'm the one with the blue check. And uh, Twitter, uh, it's at Sean Kanan. And, you know, I really do try and do my best to respond to everybody. Sometimes it takes me a while, but, um, you know, I, I really do enjoy kind of talking and communicating with people. And I, I really do love hearing their thoughts about about the books. Um, you know, I'm already, I'm already thinking about the third one. And uh, so I love to hear whatever it has to say. Nice. Well, 
<clears throat> Sean, um, I would love to have you back on when the third one comes out. We'll talk more that, and stuff brother. like that. So. Thank um, you so much for your support, man. Um, yeah. I just want to wish you and your family a wonderful holiday. And Thank you. 2023, man, kick ass. No prison. Let's do it. Let's do All it. All right, man. Take well, hey, have a good one. You too. Take care. Take care.